Hey everyone, it's Mark from WIPMX.com. Today I want to help those of you who are new to project management get started with your project plan. So, let's jump right in. The first thing you typically want to do is give your project a name. Your project probably, I'm sure, already has a name. So, to identify the project in your project plan, we'll just give it the name. In this case, it's the widget app. Now, if you're following the traditional PMI approach to waterfall, then your project will have five phases. Initiate, planning, uh, execute, monitor and control, and then finally you close the project. So I'm gonna list those stages and a couple of tasks here for right now. Oops, didn't wanna do it in caps. I need to learn how to spell. Okay, now just to speed things up here, let's do that. And then I'm just going to uh, copy and paste. And we'll go back and rename. Now, of course, in your uh, your project task wouldn't just be called task one, two, and three. You would identify them, but for the purposes of this exercise, we're just going to keep it simple. Ah, nice. So we'll change this to planning this will become execution monitor and control All right, so basically everything wraps up nice and neat under here, and you could collapse everything down if you wanted to. So now <clears throat> what you have listed here are basically your project phases. So, but. Let's go ahead and expand. And what I really want to cover here is how to customize it just so it looks a little bit, a little neater. And then also go through dependencies really quick. And again, if you're new to project management, you're probably not familiar with uh, FS, SS, SF, and FF. Uh, you really don't need that as much in project uh 2016, which is what this is right here. But if you're using Project 2010 or older, then you will need to use FS, which is Finish Start. But I'll get into that once we get there. The next thing I like to do is format my my bars. So do that there. Change to green. Yes, that. And I like to go in the text as well and then add start finish and you'll see what this does shortly and name 
and then basically project summary this is really just your your baseline your baseline is basically how long the project or a particular phase in the project should take and you'll start to see that uh, show itself as we progress I want it there, want that, and that. So now you see. Now the next thing we want to do here, and you don't have to do these steps in this order. It's just things I advise that you do. Is you want to auto schedule. You can use manual scheduling, but when you auto schedule, if you change one thing, anything that has a dependency on that will also auto update which is really good. You really want to have that in place. So let's set all those scheduling. And OK, so there we are. Now we'll start to change the dates here. We'll say task one is two days, uh, three days, and five. Oops, five doesn't really change much here but once we start to add our dependencies so task 2 has a dependency on task 3 let me see we'll make that 4 make that 5 and you can see what's happening over here now this task basically cannot start until this one has been completed and that's typically what your finished start is uh, if a task 2 has a dependency on task 1 it can't start until the other task has been finished. So this could be some sort of approval process or documentation completed. You know, it really just varies depending on the project that you're initiating. So we actually can't get into the planning phase until we initiate the project. So we'll say that uh, row seven has a dependency on two. And you see that pushes the baseline out to here now. This ends, this begins. Wow, uh, let's just throw some days in here. I'm just gonna go one, 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 one. Let me see. Uh, so we'll say this has a dependency on six, you on eight. Nine and ten. Now, just to do a little trick. We'll say nine. Start, start. Plus zero. Now you see what happened here. These two tasks now actually start at the same time because of that relationship. It starts when the other one starts. Now you can change the duration. It may not complete when the other one completes. And see how it just expanded. This has a dependency on 7. Can't execute until the planning phase has been completed. So again, you see our baseline has been pushed out here. Now the overall project baseline is extended as far as the furthest phase. The furthest phase will be extended as the furthest, furthest task. And you'll be able to, you'll have a visual representation of that once we finish here. So I apologize if it seems like I'm moving quickly. I'm trying to go slow enough so you can follow along, but fast enough to keep this video under 10 minutes, which I don't think I'm going to be able to achieve. But as it is a video on YouTube, you can always just stop it. Rewind, fast forward. Did I say rewind? Uh, scrub forward, scrub back. Uh, where were we? Okay. So we'll say 11, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And the dependencies don't always have to be uh, in an order like this. This could actually have dependency up here. I'm just doing this again just for the sake of the video. Now we have a dependency on 12. 12 is also going to be a start start because your monitoring and control should happen when you execute when you reach the execution phase of the project because you're actually monitoring the work 
I will put that as zero. Okay, so you see it starts here and you see your dependency. So these little lines basically are just your dependency. This task is connected to this task. This task is connected to this task. And earlier when I went in here to the bar styles and text, so that start finish are these dates here. Name is just the name of the task. If you were to give it some other name, um, say let's call this documentation, then now this becomes documentation. Pretty straightforward. That pop-up that you see it's basically project telling you hey you're doing the same thing multiple times there's a faster way to do it um, I could show you that there's a couple of things I have to do a couple of videos on this um, just because like traffic lights the little red green um, amber that you normally get here to let you know that hey something's progressing as planned uh, something's at risk and then there's a problem I typically add those here but that'll be for another video again I just want to get you set up and going so that when people look at your project plan they're like hey this looks pretty good and we'll go 17 here and now you see we're actually at the closure phase make all of these uh, And for those who may be asking, um, what happens? What do you mean close a project? It's basically, typically documentation is in place. You've received all the sign offs, or um, if you have an external customer, uh, whatever your close process is, you know they sign something, they some agreement. Just that all of those things have been taken care of. Customers happy, project happy. Uh, you've handed it over to BAU or whoever's going to actually. Um, service the whatever it is you've delivered going forward. So, uh, do we need dependencies here? I would just throw a few just for fun. Uh, and then you can actually make this a uh, a milestone. If you make anything uh, zero, duration zero, then it actually appears as this. And this would just be project closed. So let's put that like this. And of course, you would throw your resource names in here who's working on it things like that but I just wanted to give you the foundation to get your project plan started so again um, format your bars you don't have to go with this with what I've done but it's just what I like to do because um, you can also even if you're not using uh, graphical indicators that's what they're actually called the traffic lights you can actually change the color of a particular bar just by uh, Like if there's an issue here, oh, okay, it needs to be amber. And now that one's amber, so it stands out. This right here is just, uh, when you do it from the toolbar, it's everybody. But if you come to the particular bar itself, then you can customize it to, again, indicate if there's an issue or all's well. So, that's pretty much it for this video. 
Um, hope the information helps you. Hope you like what you see. If you have any questions, feel free to direct message me. And as always, please subscribe. I'm going to try and get more videos out. I know I keep saying that. <clears throat> but again, please subscribe. Thank you for your time.